Hi, I'm Sandgard Day. I'm here today to give you a tour uh, around our gray water system here at the Sand Garden. It's actually our second YouTube description of the gray water system. The first was a little artsier and this is a little more practical in response to your requests. Sand Garden is a $15,000 home that demonstrates a different kind of lifestyle than being tied up with a mortgage. We ourselves have built a place that heats and cools itself and as you'll see processes its own waste and grows food and uh, protects itself from fire and uh, provides a lovely lifestyle in close harmony with nature. So I hope you'll enjoy this and visit our website. Thanks. I'm here to give you uh, another little film on how we celebrate waste here at the Sand Garden. Today I'm going to take you on about a five minute trip of our gray water system. This gray water system is designed to simulate how natural ecological systems clean their water. But we do it in a little teeny microcosm. Our entire house, the entire gray water system, our gardens and so forth are contained within a rectangle about 75 feet long by 35 feet wide. So come on with me and I'll uh, start at the top of our that rectangle with our wetlands and give you a view of that. If you look down here you can see water coming into the wetlands. This is the highest point in our system and the water flows through here where it creates this jungle of tall grass vegetation, arundo, bamboo, uh, cattails, all usable, all edible, um, or to be used in construction. For example, the very tall stuff we see up there is arundo, regarded as a very invasive plant in California, but for us, uh, besides creating a windbreak, uh, a view break, our only neighbors can be seen up there. Um, they also provide for construction materials and the like. Another topic. We'll just wander past this. And as we come past, perhaps, uh, Linda, you'll show off a bit of your... Yeah, we've got some uh, herbs growing here in a little raised uh, rock garden setting with uh, just your typical basil and some Italian parsley. Got an artichoke plant growing there. In the back we have a tree that provides three types of apples, strawberry patch, and just in a nice area here. So there you go, it's quickie. And we go back over here. When the, uh, thanks, when the, all of that is watered by gray water from the system. Mm -hmm. uh, when it gets to this end of the wetlands, it flows into a little simulated stream that grows a variety of plants. This is watercress. We can see a bunch of mint, mint coming up. And it cleans water as though we're a little brook. It comes down to this end. And there's a little reservoir there um, where some of the stuff that cleans out of the water can sink and we cleans it out. Looks like right now we've got more mint than anything else. The water goes from there underground where it picks up other sources of wastewater, uh, leak from our sink and the like, and it comes down to the main pond. Main pond's about eight feet long by four feet wide, I suppose about four feet deep. And again, we have cattails. Uh, and other grasses and the function of this pond mostly is to tell us how healthy our gray water system as long as the fish are swimming and the frogs are chirping at night and uh, the grasses are growing and so forth we figure we've got pretty clean water. I might add that almost all the animals in the area from honeybees to deer and certainly the domestic animals chickens, cats, dogs and so forth, skunks, I don't know what all choose to drink from this water rather than a source of our aquifer water that's only about 75 feet from where we're standing. 
So we'll wander around this corner and head on down to the growing beds. Okay, you can see me walking in the shadows here. These are our growing beds and water that overflows from the main pond comes down to these pairs of valves uh, and the gray water then can be directed through contained beds, um, either all of them or any one of them or none of them. But when water comes into the beds, since they're uh, sealed about eight inches deep or so, the water comes down and then whatever moisture slowly makes itself to, back to a perforated pipe and it is reclaimed by the system. So we have three main growing beds here. Early in the season, so about the only thing that's really being productive are the lettuces. And when one gets to the bottom of all of this garden zone, or from any other source on the property, we end up back in the reservoir. So we started at the wetlands, the highest point in our cycle. I'll come around this way and get it a different perspective here. Okay. That's the highest point and this is the lowest point. These are water hyacinths. The filter. <laughs> very complex filter structures. Well, okay, that was Are a you quickie. Able to see that? Quickie there, but that's okay. Right there is good. If you can and see then there. we have duck lettuce. It's comprised of small filters. They're very hard to see. I can see them, but I doubt if the viewers can. That's the reservoir, and then we have one other loop. You can see the water dripping up in that zone. We call it the yoga pond. Its primarily function is to aerate, so it's a kind of a closed loop that oscillates between the reservoir and this pond. We think it's a good place to soak our feet and meditate, so it gets its name from that. And when it overflows, you can see another so called lower stream takes that back to the reservoir. Because we don't release our gray water, it technically is not a gray water system and does not require certification and the like. As long as the water is sealed, it goes around and around. It's our water. And as we understand it, if we lose that to transpiration through plants or evaporation through ponds or ingestion through all those animals, uh, that's just fine. And that's all that we do. So we celebrate our waste here. At the sand garden and thanks for taking a look at our gray water system. Well thank you. That was fun. <laughs>